as we have been discussing, the purpose of your show, amongst other things, is to humorously okay. dispel myths and misconceptions. So with that in mind, we're going to challenge you to a game of urban legends. Sure. I'm going to name three urban legends. You'll tell me if there is any kernel of truth in them at all, and if so, what it might be. Okay, well, I, I haven't heard what these are, so I don't. I may not know for sure. You I'm may, not an expert on all urban legends. I kind of hope you don't. If, I might just wing it and tell you if it sounds like uh, if it sounds like BS to me. Can I say, can I curse in full? You absolutely I'll, should. I'll just wing it and say if it sounds a little bullshitty. And if but. it sounds bullshitty, you can make up some bullshit and turn about where it came from. We're open to that. <laughs> I got all of this off the internet, so what okay. the hell do I know? All right, so one of the most popular folklore legends, there's an entire, I guess, area of lore that is called cochlear. Cochlear? Cochlear is that if you leave a tooth in the cup of a Coca-Cola overnight, it will dissolve by the morning. Oh yeah, I don't think that could possibly be true. But do you do you have a sense of where this the kernel of truth in this rotten tooth is? Well, people love to believe that like it, the ur urban legends that do well are ones that like fit a belief that people already have, you yeah. know? So people believe that Coke is very bad for you and that it's like, you know, tastes kind of acidic. So they believe it like it seems kind of chemically. So it's very easy for people to believe that it has like magical chemical properties, you know? Um, and they were once called cocaine. Uh, yeah, it, well, I mean, there was like some kind of, yeah, like there was, yeah, there was like originally like coca leaf in it or yeah. whatever, but yeah, like it's, it, it's, you know, that's plausible to people and they want to believe that. I mean, Coke is bad for you, right? Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean it's like, you know, it's actually not that acidic, you know, that it would, I, I'm sure it's bad for you. It wouldn't dissolve a tooth overnight. Well, I was thinking if it dissolved a tooth overnight, what might it do to your soft tissue of your intestines? But you know what's weird? What it can do, it's can, if you put a little bit of Coke into your lawn, Laundry. If you have like oil or blood stains, it can help remove them. You can, yeah, I know it's weird. It can people use it. Mechanics use it to clean up corrosion on batteries. Mm -hmm. um, this so is good it does, carbonation, right? It seems like seltzer yeah, would, would be more helpful than Coke. Well, yeah, you but don't need the sugar in the smell. Is good. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's partially the carbonation, and I think it's partially cocaine and magic, um, as all good things in life are. Mm -hmm. We can agree on that. So the next one is all right. There is an this one so much. There is an axe wielding bunny man wandering the DC countryside terrorizing school children. Currently? Just you said whenever. is. Whenever it's it's it, a, it's an urban legend that the bunny man is out there. There's an urban legend that it's that it's currently happening. That the bunny man is going to get you. All right, I don't. I, I mean, <laughs> probably be national news if it were true. So, uh, so I'm gonna say not true. That there's no current bunny man, like a man wearing bunny ears, or like a like a full bunny outfit and an axe. A full bunny outfit with an axe, and he's and he's killing people right now. That's he, the urban legend. We don't know if he's, he's killing out people. There, he's out he's there. with an axe. Every day, there's yeah. people dying, being killed by a bunny man. I don't know that they're dying. I think but this news has there. only gotten out through urban legend. <laughs> it's only like through the whisper machine that that people are hearing about it. No reporters interested in the story. Not at all. I think that I find that unlikely. <laughs> I find, find that, that hard unlikely. to believe. Yeah. The Colonel fun to think about, <laughs> but just because things are fun to think about doesn't make them true. Make a great movie. The kernel of truth is, I guess there was in the 1970s, there was a, in 1970, actually, there was a couple parked and a man in a bunny suit came out with an axe and was like, you're trespassing and threw the axe and it shattered their windshield, but nobody died. And so I think that ever since then, there's been this rumor of an axe wielding bunny man, because why would you not want to imagine that there's an axe wielding bunny man? Is this a real rumor? Did you hear this rumor? Or is, did, did you read this on a list of urban I, legends on I, a website? I, fully, I don't mean to call you out. No, but. call me out. No, I'm totally <laughs> full of shit. I was doing this last night on the internet where I get all my facts. <laughs> I'm just saying, are there people are there people out there who are currently worried about the ex-wielding bunny? Man? I feel like there are. The next one I can speak to from a person. I didn't grow up in Washington. Mm -hmm. I do think that it is a vortex, a, probably a portal to the Hellgate. I'm pretty sure because I've been there and it feels like that yeah. to me. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was an ex-wielding bunny man, but I yeah. didn't grow out there, so I don't know. <laughs> the next one, I do know what the kids say. Oh yeah, yes. you've heard this one firsthand. I've heard this one firsthand because I grew up in New York City. The tunnels beneath New York City are mm. filled with man-eating alligators and oh, yeah. or cannibalistic humanoid, humanoid underground dwellers, a.k.a. Chud. 
this is the Ninja Turtles you're describing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, this, well. This is a cla- this is the this oldest is the urban legend the, about the New York. Classic yeah. One, right? Yeah. I mean, that's just that's like a thing that kids say to scare each other, you know, because yeah. it was like the, about like flushing snakes and stuff like that, yes. and et cetera. And there's the and you know there is this idea of the New York City's sewers is like this vast unexplored area that's full of you know Horrors creatures and, and things. Terrible yeah. things. But it's weird how much people exoticize it. Like there was a there was a book a couple years ago uh, called like the mole people. The mole people. And there was and a movie it, Dark Days. Yeah, and it was about like oh, there's like a city of mole people that live underground. They have their own society. That's one way of describing. You'd also describe it as like there's some very unfortunate homeless people yes, who live in the who absolutely. live in you know who who live in some uh, neglected areas. Like it, so, we exoticize and treat it as though it's this magical area when. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it's, I do. It's, it's it, the Dark Days documentary. I think actually took the latter point of view, mm-hmm. which it was sort of exploring the homeless population that lived in the tunnels. Yeah. And he went down and he lived with them for three months. Yeah. Um, but I did grow up in New York, and we were told each other when I was growing up, "Don't when you're taking the subway, never get too close to the tunnels because somebody's going to grab you and kidnap you <laughs> and pull you down to live in the cu- tunnels forever." So that was a real thing. <laughs> And I still kind of believe it. Like like it was so, it was said so, like you would be instead like an Indiana mole woman. That's a very common childhood fear for a, uh, for like something to come out and grab you. Yeah, right. When I was a kid, I thought that if you, um, if I watched the toilet flush all the way, that a witch (laughs) would come out. I don't know. That is so fast. Steal me away. A witch, like on a broomstick, I imagine. (laughs) So I would flush the toilet and I would run out of the bathroom as fast as I could because I was scared. I was scared. Um, and that was a real that was a real thing I thought. So like I think all I think all kids think that stuff is always going to come out and grab them in all situations. Yeah, but especially from the toilet. There so that rumor started about the alligators. Mm-hmm. I I the, the New York Times I think it was in 1935 ran a story that some boys pulled a 6-foot alligator out of the sewers and then beat it to death with um, shovels as they were shoveling the driveway. I know it's a nightmare. I'm like, the poor alligator, my God. I don't know if it's true or not, but supposedly that's where, it, and then it yeah. was, it got reinvigorated in the 70s when there was this rumor that a bunch of people had come back from Florida with baby alligators and then inexplicably mm-hmm. flushed them down the toilet where mm-hmm. they grew and lived to terrorize the underground yeah. realms of New York. And there's a movie called Alligator about that. That's amazing because <laughs> This is such an amazing movie. They built models uh-huh. to, for like the size of the city, and then they put a real alligator in it to make uh, it look bigger. That's <laughs> wonderful. That's was, great. That's wonderful. That's classic monster movie making. Classic. Build a little miniature, and then and then have a small animal, and say yeah. the animal grew big. Mwah. Yes. Love it. Yeah. But these are the things that nightmares are made of that make you look in the toilet before you flush your <laughs> business, I suppose. For breaking entertainment news and more, follow at HitVix on Twitter or visit HitVix.com.